Okay guys, I'm back. <laughs> New board. Change the colors to make it easier to kind of see the different lines here because, you know, not that great of a drawer. So, cat ratings. Cat 4, that's the highest rating you get. That's three phase utility type stuff. Service entrance. Service entrance is where the drop, the power utility company, the utility power drops into your building. That's the service entrance. That's where the meter is. So that stuff, you know, it's all cap four. That's the scary stuff. That's electricians, well trained. You know, they go through apprenticeship, journeyman, masters. Those guys, they're out there working on that stuff. Okay, cat three, same thing. Well trained guys. Uh, you might be working in an industrial building, going off measuring motors and uh, lighting equipment stuff like that so it's three phase distribution feeders and lighting so these two things here if there's an issue in the meter if you're taking a current reading and you forgot to move the probes well that current reading it's going through a shunt in your meter that little metal you know shunt bar that you see sometimes it's a five million ohm surface mount resistor it's a little shunt device and uh, it's basically a short circuit, you know, five milliohms. There might be 10 milliohms between the meter leads because you got a few milliohms in the meter leads. You got, uh, you got a milliohm in the fuse maybe, and you got the, uh, the five milliohms of, of uh, that shunt. And that shunt's dropping that voltage so it can measure. That's how it figures out what the current is across it, okay? So then you go, and you forget to move your leads, you go to measure a voltage, well, you got voltage divided by 10 milliohms, that could be like 10,000 amps, so lots of current. So that's why you have those high rupture capacity fuses, because out here, that's all that's gonna stop the current, probably. Now, cat two, now I'm over here on the other side of the wall, and I've got a breaker panel. I got a 15 amp, maybe 20 or maybe even a 30 amp breaker, but most likely a 15 amp breaker. Yeah, so now you got a breaker to, to uh, do a lot of the protection for you. So category two, you got a single phase power and it's usually, the, the way you can tell category two, it's usually got a, a, a power cord. Like all this equipment that I have plugged into the outlets back here, those are, those all fit in category two, okay? And then category one is electronics. That's sitting here at the bench. That's on the other side of an isolation transformer that's inside. So my equipment here, all this stuff has isolation transformers in it. It's all isolated from the primary power, okay? So if I have a fault here on the bench, all this equipment, whether it be AC or DC, uh, if I have an AC power supply, whatever, it's all going to be limited uh, energy. So, a lot safer. Okay? So, as far as how much energy you have, there's that whole thing going on. There's another thing as far as the energy in a transient. If I'm outdoors and, uh, you know, a lightning strike hits a telephone pole down the road or something like that then I could get a surge into my test equipment and it could be you know high uh, now if I'm you know sitting here at the bench for it to make it through self through my house and all that kind of stuff over here it's giving me a lot lower so you got the potential fault current that's one of the things you got to be careful about the voltage level and a transient level so those three things are what a meter is designed to uh, protect against basically you have the voltage isolation for both the voltage and the transients and have a fuse the proper fuse in there for the fault current now one more category mixed okay you could be I don't know like let's say you have a copy machine you're a copy machine repair guy so you're out there working on copy machines you're gonna have AC inside there but plus you're gonna have 
on the other side of the power supply inside the cock machine you're going to have some DC electronics so it's kind of a mix between these two things I wanted to cover the, uh, something else on category one a lot of times it's thought of as low power low voltage stuff but you could also have high voltage here so you could be test you know that copy machine example that copy machine might have some high voltage inside it high, high voltage power supply and uh, that's category one and the reason why it's high voltage but it's kind of low energy because it's got a transformer that's pumping the voltage up but it doesn't have a lot of current so it's it's still kind of considered lower energy so it's category one you know, if you're a television repair guy, right? So, now, if you're high enough voltage, you can damage meters pretty quick. So, you know, if you work around that kind of stuff, you know that, because you may have already damaged something. But the, uh, the meters have come a long ways, and they can protect themselves for a lot of, you know, cockpit errors. <laughs> you know, so, now, the thing about... The thing about the high rupture capacity fuse, if you're not measuring current through your multimeter, all right. So I've I mostly work around category one, category two type stuff, but I've had to work around category three before, and uh, you know, from time to time actually. Now when I'm doing that that kind of stuff, I'm not, you know, I just I guess I just don't have the wavels to put current through my meter. The only time I do that is when I'm down here in category one. <laughs> you know, the micro amps, milliamps, or even up to 10 amps. Come on, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I just don't wanna put AC power through the meter if I'm on the other side of that breaker. Okay, if I'm sitting here at the bench and I got AC power come through, yeah, I might do that. But otherwise, if, I feel a lot safer taking a meter like this and clamping on, okay? Uh, and I'll tell you something else. If I am measuring that current in those kind of applications, I hope I don't get sloppy or lazy enough that I don't remember to move that probe from current, see? And the meter, that's another safety device these days, guys. A lot of the meters like this guy says, you know, Error, error, <laughs> Will Robertson. You've got the place, you know, you got to get your meter in the right spot. So, if you're around dangerous stuff, that category three, category four, or even category two, make sure you got the meter set in the bloody correct position. Okay, don't rely on a HRC fuse to save the day. I mean, come on. I, you know, I'm not going to do that. But that's what those fuses are there for. So, you know what, for me, most of my meters, those fuses are a waste because if I do accidentally burn one up, which I did the other day, because I was running an audio amplifier and this, this thing will go up to 15, over 15 amps. And I was testing an audio amplifier, I had the power up. Voltage isn't really high, but uh, I had it over 10 amps. I had it right, just, just over 10 amps, but it was there for a little while. And finally the fuse opened. Now I gotta replace the fuse. It's probably a $7 fuse. Glass fuse would have been cheap, but so let's talk about those safety features. Okay guys, so some of these uh, features you might find in a digital multimeter safety features. Number one is the fuse, that high rupture capacity, that HRC fuse that ceramic the one that has now if it is a true HRC type fuse it will have a UL uh, listing on it uh, if you see the ceramic ones without all the writing on them without the UL mark or some other one of those other safety agencies if you don't see those it's not a true high rupture capacity fuse it could be I mean you know it's just not certified but if you see a ceramic fuse, if it's a ceramic structure, it's pretty strong, okay? People knock those other fuses, but you know what else? There could be some barriers going on. So I put that on the voltage isolation because 
when the fuse blows, you want that voltage isolation. You, you don't want it to arc across somewhere else. Well, you've seen those fuses that are in their own little compartment, like a lot of times they are. Well, what if it's a glass fuse even? If it ruptures and blows apart, where's it gonna go? Where's it gonna arc to? So you see what I'm getting to? There's other ways to solve that issue, like voltage isolation, barriers. What about those little slots in the board that you see? Some people point out, I don't see slots. Yeah, that's not good. Well, that's not true. It doesn't need slots because slots cost money. They have to route those out. That costs money. Drilling holes, free. Routing, not free. So if you can separate things with distance, that's the better way to go. <clears throat> that's the that's a cheaper way to go and sometimes that's and that can be just fine too. If you can't use the separation, then you need to put a slot. But and then sometimes you put that slot and then you see some of these products that have a piece of plastic from the case kind of go up to that slot to create even more of a boundary. That's more barrier. So when you look at those reviews, when you take apart things, look how many barriers there are. Now, in some of these multimeters, there's, there's very few barriers. Uh, another thing I didn't really talk about, well, voltage isolation, uh, batteries. When you open it up and you see the battery in its own compartment, that's great. When you see the fuses in their own compartment, great. If they're not the high rupture capacity, you know, with UL listing, still maybe, still might be great. It's hard to say. If it's a category four, well, I expect to see it. If it's category three or below, maybe not. Maybe it's not needed. Maybe it's not as important. So now the other thing about the fuse, again, that the biggest case for the necessity of a great fuse is bonehead moves. <laughs> it's that bonehead move where you forgot to take your probe out of the current thing and you're taking a voltage reading and now you got it short. So you want to make sure you stick that back in the voltage. If you're not taking current readings around AC high powered stuff, then that fuse, like a lot of my meters, never gets used. It doesn't matter. It's waste I mean, it's basically just sitting there collecting something. Dust? I don't know. Oxidation? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know if they're hermetically sealed, but anyway, you get my point. Uh, I rarely used those fuses for high energy, almost never. So, uh, voltage isolation, that's important. You have transients come along. So if a transient happens, if you protect that transient from letting the voltage get too high, then it's easier to keep this isolation intact. Uh, how do you do that? TVS diodes. Usually you find the TVS diodes around the fuse, around the around the current measurements. When you you got that little short circuit, you're measuring current, it's 5 milliohms. If a transient comes by, uh, you're expecting, your meter's expecting a low voltage there to read, to identify what current level it is. If it sees a transient very high, it can damage it. These diodes, very low energy. They don't handle much energy. Whether you have those diodes or not, the meter is not going to blow up in your hand. The worst case scenario without those diodes is it's going to kill your chip, just like an ESD strike will. Okay, your your meter will just stop working. It's not a, not so much a safety issue as it is a safety issue for your processor on your multimeter. Okay, the MOV GDT, yes, they clamp voltages or crowbar in this case. You don't see GDTs too often, gas, discharge tube. You don't see those too often, you mostly uh, MOVs, metal oxide varistor. An MOV, the way it works, is when the voltage gets so high, it's like a varistor. It's like a resistor that drops in ohms, so it clamps the voltage. This guy crowbars, he goes to essentially a short, maybe 20 volts. This guy, he clamps he clamps the voltage whatever setting the voltages you know whatever rating the voltage is so he'll clamp to that level okay that mov it's just not that high of energy uh 
it's hopefully keeping the voltage low enough so it doesn't arc over. The arc is the thing that leads to the next fault because if you have so much voltage isolation, say you have 500 to 1,000 volts, 600 to 1,000 volts, something like that, well then if, if you know, you break that voltage, then it, you know, things break down and bad things happen. So where is that going to happen? If you're outdoors, more likely. If you're sitting here at the bench with the AC voltage coming off the wall, not very likely. So, you know, uh, these meters, I don't think I have any meters I'd be afraid to, to read AC voltage with, okay? Because I'm in cat one, cat two area, not cat three, cat four. Every time you go up a category, the energy goes up, I want to say exponentially, but it goes up a lot. So, uh, PTCs, that's another thing you see. Now those PTCs...